Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ari, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado, let's go. Today's first story. In this story, OP notices his wife's intense comparison with her twin sister, even comparing him to her brother-in-law. Discovering their emotional affair, he exposes them at a motel, leading to their family's confrontation. Both marriages end, leaving his ex-wife shattered while he advances professionally. She spirals into destructive behavior while he finds success. Now let's get into the story. My wife, 26 female, was extremely competitive with her twin sister. I, 32 male, noticed pretty quickly that she compared their jobs, houses, community involvement, style, self-discipline, self-discrimination, and even spouses. Yes, she even compared me to her brother-in-law. In these comparisons, she usually claimed herself the higher achiever, and her sister merely a close second, but in certain things, my wife wasn't as confident and looked to me for reassurance. To my dismay, she didn't seem totally convinced that I was the better catch. After talking about her brother-in-law's career in law enforcement and weightlifting dedication, she got quiet and inevitably started giving me hints that she wanted me to do some of the things he was doing. I was fit and lean, working as a van driver and handyman in a small, privately owned construction company. I wasn't making very much money but it was enough to pay half the household bills. My wife covered the other half with her various social media platform sponsors and a part-time job as a makeup saleswoman. When she started comparing me to her sister's husband, I lost it. I told her she was lucky she had such an easy way to earn money and that she owed it to the fact that she was born with a beautiful face and learned how to charm and manipulate people. She was pretty upset with me after that and didn't want to listen when I said I was working really hard and it was only a matter of time before I got a pay increase. It wasn't long after this interaction that I noticed my wife's increased interaction with her brother-in-law. They were commenting on each other's posts and pictures on social media. I knew he was texting her because I saw a preview of his text pop up on my wife's phone before she grabbed it. Everything came to a head when I saw them at a cookout together. My wife's entire family was there, so it was crowded, but out of all the people my wife could have been catching up with, she was standing side by side with her brother-in-law. As soon as I went to the bathroom, she disappeared to find him. By the time I found her, they were smiling and talking intimately. Irritated, I scanned the crowd for my sister-in-law. She was oblivious to what her sister and husband were doing. Since my wife was distracted, I went through her purse to find her phone. I took it to the bathroom and had time to read and screenshot a plethora of messages that spelled out their emotional and lustful affair. My wife admired him for his bravery and self-discipline, physical fitness, and flattered him in a variety of ways, some things she never even said to me. They sent each other nudes, and that's when my hands started shaking. Their most recent messages were plans to meet at a cheap motel in four days, when their spouses would be working. I couldn't believe what I was reading, because my wife, as I knew her, would never be so heartless or inconsiderate enough to have an affair with her own sister's husband. Yet, it was clearly happening. I waited until after the cookout to text the most crucial screenshots to my sister-in-law, along with a message that suggested we wait to ambush them at the motel with additional family members. She was completely shocked and devastated, so it took some persuasion to find her to get her to agree to keep it a secret until then. When the day came, she and I, plus 10 other family members, including their parents and members of AP's family, sat in our cars and waited for them to check in. They were riding in AP's car, looking as giddy as a newlywed couple. As soon as they started walking towards their room, keycard in hand, all of us got out and started walking towards them. I remember I was the one that got their attention first, followed by the rest of the family. When they saw us, it looked like they were struck by lightning. They froze, gasped, locked up, and needed to change their drawers. My wife's sister started screaming at them, which made her husband drop to his knees, trying to reach for her hand in desperation. 
My wife did not know what to say. She didn't like being wrong, and she was clearly wrong in this for her entire family to see. She just started saying they didn't do anything over and over again, trying to yell louder than the other family members and myself. I finally showed her the picture she sent to AP, and that made her shut up, but she still didn't want to accept this chain and guilt. She turned and tried to speed walk away, but her uncle stopped her and called her a home wrecker, scolding her for ruining her sister's life. He demanded she face her and take accountability for her actions, but she just screamed and kicked when he wouldn't let her go. She ran down the street crying because she didn't drive to the motel. AP was willing to do anything to win back the love of his wife, but she refused to maintain a broken marriage with someone she couldn't trust. I felt the same way, and even though my wife wasn't begging my forgiveness at the time, she called me howling when she received divorce papers. With the screenshots and entire family as my witness, she couldn't claim her innocence and she finally broke down. She admitted she made the worst mistake of her life and that she never should have been comparing her sister's life to her own. Even though they both regretted it, my wife and AP were shunned from the family, never to be contacted again. Without her mom, sister, or dad, my ex went down a metaphorical hole and never maintained the image that paid her so well before. She started smoking and drinking, while I got a huge promotion to assistant lead in a growing construction company. Today's second story. In this story, OP met his wife at a book signing five years ago. They hit it off quickly, but he had been hurt in a previous marriage. Despite his insecurities, she reassured him. After relocating for his job, he discovered his wife's infidelity during a family vacation. He orchestrated a confrontation, then abruptly left and filed for divorce, struggling with trust afterward. Now let's get into the story. I 37 male met my wife 31 female, five years ago at a book signing. She and I were both big fans of an author who was on a book tour and doing readings at small local libraries. We were both there alone and sat together by chance. We started talking about the books and we just hit it off right away. I asked her out for coffee and from there our relationship blossomed. We were only together for a year and a half when I proposed. We've been married for about three and a half years. I was actually married before I met my wife. It was quite unfortunate, but I married my high school sweetheart, and she ended up cheating on me with a co-worker so we had a very bitter divorce. From the start of our relationship, I was very upfront with my wife about that. It was something I was insecure about. I still had some wounds from being cheated on and I wanted to make sure she wasn't going to make them worse. She assured me that when she had her eyes on someone, they were the only person she thought of. It felt good to hear that, and I was very confident in our relationship. My wife was very close with her family. When we originally met, we were only living about 45 minutes away from them. But about a year into our marriage, I got offered an incredible promotion at another branch of my company. It was too good to pass up, so she agreed to move all the way across the country with me. It was tough because she was away from her family, but we made it work. Every year her family would all go to a lake house they owned and have a family vacation together. Because of the move and the pandemic, my wife hadn't gone for a few years and she missed it. Last summer, she told me that she really wanted us to go because she missed her family. Unfortunately, it didn't line up with my schedule to go, but I didn't want to keep her from going. So, she went alone. I had met her family a few times in person, but most of the interactions I had with them were online. In particular, I was good friends with some of her cousins. They were into a lot of the same things as me, and we even had a group chat together where we exchanged memes and played some games online. I didn't hear much from my wife while she was away aside from the nightly message telling me goodnight. I was fine with it. I knew she was a family, so I wasn't really too worried about anything. Toward the end of the week, one of her cousins called me. It wasn't unusual for that to happen, but it was a little weird because I knew that they were with family. I answered half expecting there to be a bunch of people on the other end just calling to say hi, but I was wrong. He was practically whispering on the phone, clearly trying to keep the conversation a secret. He told me that he values my friendship and he didn't want anything to jeopardize that. Plus, with everything I told him about my past relationship, he felt like I deserved to know what was happening. 
My heart was pounding out of my chest as he told me this. Apparently, my wife had been meeting up with a guy that she used today. He was her summer fling every time they would visit the lake house. Her cousin wasn't able to tell me if they had been sleeping together, he didn't know. But he was a little bit alarmed by how much time they were spending together. It would have been one thing if she'd mentioned that he was someone she would be seeing while she was there. Maybe grabbing coffee with him wouldn't have been the end of the world, but to see him several times while she was away and not telling me felt like a betrayal. I had been through all of that before and I was starting to get really worried. The last thing I wanted was to find out that my wife was cheating on me when my ex-wife had done the exact same thing. I asked her cousin for the guy's name and he told me. Right away, I went on to all of my wife's social media pages and searched for him. I found him on her Facebook and I saw that they had been interacting a little bit on her public page. I didn't want to do it, but I had every reason to believe that something was going on. I knew her password, so I logged into Facebook and looked through their messages. When I looked through them, I saw that they had been messaging each other fairly regularly. A majority of the messages were friendly, sharing jokes with each other, and just chatting about life. About a week before my wife was set to leave for her trip, she messaged him and told him she would be in town. He was very excited about it and he even said, how long has it been? Three years? My wife replied confirming that. I was shocked to hear that. I had never even heard of a guy before, but he saw my wife three years ago. From what I could glean from the messages, he got married three years ago, and they were together one last time before his marriage. It was also clear from the recent messages that they had planned on being together during the week my wife was away. He had also appeared to be a very close friend of mine, apparently moved away from town, so if he lied and told his wife that he was going on a work trip, I felt absolutely gutted by the information. This was the second time I was going to get divorced because my wife had cheated on me. Maybe it was the anger because it was happening again, or maybe it was just me not wanting to take this lying down, but I wanted to get some revenge on them. The only issue was that I was all the way across the country. After I did some digging, I found out that his wife actually only lived a couple of towns over. It wouldn't have been impossible for her to go and catch them in the act. I thought about what I wanted to do carefully, but I ended up sending her a message through Instagram and explaining everything to her. She was very easy to convince because she had already suspected something was up. I told her that she needed to go and catch them and get some evidence against them. She agreed and I gave her the information for the hotel that I knew they were meeting up at. I waited by my phone all day for her to send me the pictures or videos that she took of them together. She called me a few hours after she was supposed to be there and told me what she saw. When she knocked on the door, her husband thought that it was room service that he had ordered. She could clearly see that he was in the room with another woman, so she stormed in and found my wife in bed. She wasn't able to get any pictures, but my wife left shortly after and she didn't know what happened. However, she asked him why he was with my wife. He told her that there was nothing emotional between them at all. They had a history, but the history was entirely intimate. He even admitted to her that all his life, over anyone else he's been with including her, that my wife was the best intimate he ever had. When they were near each other, they liked to meet up just for intimacy and nothing else. That news really hurt to hear, but it was enough proof for me to leave. My wife and I were living in an apartment at the time, so I packed my things while she was still away and I disappeared. I didn't tell her where I was going, I didn't tell her why I was leaving. When she got back from her vacation, I didn't pick her up at the airport like I was supposed to. She had been calling me and texting me asking me where I was, so I just blocked her number. I ghosted her completely. When she got home, she found a long note that I left alongside the divorce papers. I told her that I didn't want anything to do with her. Thankfully, we signed a prenup so there was no chance that we were going to have a lengthy divorce battle. The last time I ever saw her was when we were signing the official papers. Now I'm struggling to find another person who I feel like I can put my trust in. It's extremely difficult when two people you have given yourself to have betrayed you like that. Today's third story. In this story, OP discovers his wife's affair with his brother, devastatingly realized after his sister-in-law's death. Despite suspicions, he confirms the cheating by overhearing intimate moments. Confronted them publicly, 
exposing messages detailing the affair. Divorces wife, severs ties with brother, and alienates them from family. Reflects on moving forward, leaving behind the pain and betrayal. Now let's get into the story. I 33 male knew my wife 31 female all of my life, but she and I hadn't started dating until about 10 years ago. We went to high school together, though we weren't really in the same circles. I was more athletic and involved in sports, and she was a bit of a bookworm who spent her full time in the library. I hate to say it, but I hardly even noticed her in high school. But at a reunion, we ran into each other and we really hit it off. I didn't even care about any of the other classmates in the room. I just wanted to talk to her. We ended up dating, and a year later we got married. It all happened fast, but we felt like it was right. For the past 10 years of our marriage, we have never questioned that. A little over a year ago, my sister-in-law was tragically diagnosed with lung cancer. The entire family was shattered by the news, especially my brother. Unfortunately, my sister-in-law wasn't able to fight off the cancer and she passed away about three months after the diagnosis. It was a horrible tragedy for the entire family, and there was a hole left in our hearts. My wife had always been a very gentle caring person, so she took it upon herself to make sure my brother was taken care of while he was in mourning. She would make food and bring it over to his house, she would make sure he was eating, she washed his clothes, and made sure he had someone to talk to. From the way it sounded, she was a rock for him in the hardest time of his life. Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that the two of them were sleeping together, but I was so wrong. The first instance where I noticed something was off was when I showed up at my brother's house. One day after my wife had told me she was going over there. I had a key and I never knocked on his door when I went to visit, so I just walked in and hollered for them both. It took a minute for them to come and meet me, but they both came from the part of the house where the bedrooms were. Genuinely, I did not think anything could have been going on. I asked them what was going on, and they told me that they were just tidying up the room. The three of us spent the rest of the night together at his house. I noticed that they were sitting somewhat close on the couch, but I didn't think much of it. I trusted them. One night, all my wife and I were both at home. She got a text message from my brother. She told me that she would be going over there the following day and helping him go through some of his wife's belongings. I didn't have a problem with it, but I was starting to feel like she was too much of a crutch for him. I suggested that maybe instead of going over there, we should offer to pay for therapy for him. I figured it might be nice for him to have a professional to talk to. She just brushed it off and said that she would talk to him about it and see what he said the following day. Now I knew that packing up some of his wife's belongings and figuring out what to do with them would be a big task. That is a big step in moving forward for anyone. I was a little hurt that he hadn't asked me to help him. But again my wife had been a major help to him since his wife passed. While I was driving home from work, I figured it might be nice to stop by and offer to help. I grabbed some takeout food and made my way over to my brother's house. When I unlocked the door to go in, I was about to holler and get their attention, but I heard some strange noises. They were unmistakably intimate noises. I couldn't believe I was hearing something like that when my brother had just lost his wife. On top of that, he was there with my wife. I simply walked out of the house. I was shocked at the time, and I didn't know how to process what I had just heard. I tried to rationalize it, thinking that maybe he had someone else there, and it wasn't my wife. But when I got home and saw that she wasn't there, I knew that wasn't the case. I played it cool, thinking about how I wanted to move forward. I was 100% going to leave my wife, and I was going to cut my brother off. Both of them completely shattered my trust. My wife returned home about an hour later, and immediately went to take a shower. While she was in there, I walked into the bathroom and started brushing my teeth. It wasn't unusual for us to use the bathroom at the same time. That's one of the perks of married life, I guess. Her phone was on the counter, so I grabbed it. While she was showering, I looked through her messages with my brother and found dozens of text messages where they had both been recounting the times they shared together. My brother was frequently asking her to come over because he wanted to feel her again. I scrolled back to around the time when my wife first started going to visit him. I found messages where they confessed their feelings for each other. Apparently, my brother had put the first feelers out for the relationship. 
He told my wife that he had always had feelings for her in high school, but he was too nervous to ask her out. She told him that she had felt the same way. She went so far as to tell him that sometimes when she was sleeping with me, she would be imagining that it was him. I took screenshots of the messages, and I sent them to myself before deleting them from her phone. I put it back down on the counter so she would never know that I even had them. I hated them both, and I wanted them to suffer for what they did. As angry as I was that they betrayed me, I couldn't believe that they would disrespect my brother's late wife the way that they had. They were both unbelievably selfish, and they needed to be called out for it. I gathered several of my family members, mostly the core family, who had the biggest impact on my and my brother's lives. My brother and my wife were there, sitting right next to each other. We had a peaceful dinner together, and toward the end just outright told everybody what I discovered. My brother and wife tried to make it seem like I was crazy and nothing was going on. Then I pulled out my phone and read off quotes from the screenshots. They were later horrified as I read the messages. My mom asked my brother if my said was true and I could hear the sadness in her voice. Everybody yelled at both of them for how disrespectful it was to my sister-in-law. It hadn't even been six months since she had passed away and he had started an affair with his sister-in-law. Everybody asked questions, and we found out that the affair started two months after his wife died. It was unbelievable to hear. Everybody was yelling at them and telling them that they were selfish and cold and I didn't want to see them. My parents didn't think that I handled it the right way, but they were glad that I told everyone about it. They had all been feeling very sorry for him for his grief, but he was clearly not mourning in the same way as them. In the end, I divorced my wife and I'm happy now without her. She didn't ask for anything in the divorce, and if she did I had enough evidence of her affair that she wouldn't have gotten it. Almost all of my family is extremely angry with my brother, and he hasn't been invited to any gatherings or events since they found out. I don't know if people are going to come around and forgive him, or if he's going to stay in the doghouse. All I know is that I never want to see either of them again.